What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic with the second of the AI challenges. Now, after the first challenge, there was a really great, great turnout. I mean, there were a lot of people who came out and put out awesome designs and uh, there were a lot of them that worked and I wasn't anywhere close to the top. So I decided to make a little bit more difficult of a challenge this time and not one that's based on a time trial. I will go back to some more easy challenges as well as we keep going through, but I wanted to go with a little bit more difficult one for this week. And I think I made it easy enough so it's not too difficult, um, but it's difficult enough. And this is going to be a challenge that involves accuracy and timing and sequencing and, uh, and just overall awesomeness. And so, the objective is really quite simple. We've got this track here and it's a monorail track and it goes between these three different platforms. And what you have to do is build a vehicle that starts at this location here, grabs onto the track, goes along the track and picks up this crate. And then it brings this crate back and drops it on one of these two targets. And you'll see here, these targets are the same size as the crate and they have this little hole that you can use to help line up where the crate needs to be positioned on the target. But really you can drop the crate anywhere on the platform. The target just dictates points. And then afterwards you have to go and go grab the second crate at the further platform. And again, go grab the crate here. You'll notice too, there's no end on the rail. The uh, Your vehicle has to be smart enough not to drive off the rail or to stop when it grabs a crate or whatever. Then you have to build a vehicle, grab the second crate, and then work your way back, all the way back and drop the second crate off at one of these locations. So like I said, this isn't going to be a timed challenge at all. This is going to be purely based on a point system. And uh, I'll explain the points really simply. So. For each crate you bring back, you get a potential amount of points and the points are going to range really simply from the center all the way out. So if you get it perfectly in the center, it'll be five points and then four points if it's touching this second ring, three points if it's touching this ring, two points if it's touching this ring, one point if it's just anywhere touching the target and zero points if it somehow drops and lands on the grass. I mean, these targets are pretty much close uh, as close as they can be so you know if you even drop both the crates like right here and here It doesn't matter that uh, you'll still get points so you can drop a crate like that You'll still get one point the crate could even be just like that and you'll still get one point The idea behind these targets is uh, you know I'm trying to see who can get the best points so a perfect score would be 10 points and uh, that would be if both crates are perfectly centered on both targets and like I said no time limit uh, if I have a lot of creations that make it to 10 points, then I might, you know, see which ones were the fastest, but overall I'm, I'm going to try and show all the ones that get to the 10 point range. So in terms of rules, there's nothing really too specific about this challenge. Uh, as, as with the previous challenge, you're not allowed to use any mods or any glitches. Uh, you have to do it all in vanilla. You can grab both crates at the same time if you want. You can grab them one at a time, it doesn't matter and uh, you can use thrusters or you can use wheels. Again, that doesn't really matter. And you'll notice these four black dots on the spawning point, and that is where your lift will be placed. So I'm going to simply put the lift down. Your creation has to be able to reach up and grab the monorail arm. I'm not gonna put it on the monorail arm itself. So you just simply put the lift down like this. It reaches up, grabs the arm, and starts the sequence. So the creation has to have a button or a switch on it to start it. And, uh, and then it'll go do its thing and grab the boxes and do whatever. When it's done, it can just drive off the end. It doesn't really matter or it can stop where it is. Again, doesn't really matter how you want to do that. So as with the previous challenge, uh, I built a manual vehicle that will run the course. So, you know, we take this, put it up on the black there, right in between those, and then we jump up. And uh, I just, you know, very simply just uses a couple wheels just to hold it up vertically and then some bars to keep it along the sides. So you can see we press one there, that gets it up on top there, and it lifts us up. And then we press two, and that thrusts us forward. Now, it uh, you can see there, it does kind of jerk a lot. That's because it only has wheels on the top, so it doesn't really have a good set of guide wheels. Uh, I should have put wheels on the sides as well to guide it. But you can see there, we gotta be careful because we can only fit through the suspension pieces here on these these little bars. So you'll notice on each of these platforms, there's a little bit of a grid pattern, and that's because the box will actually always be on this brown square. So each box has a, a little brown square, 
and it's always centered in the same way and uh, you can always use the beam as a reference point. So you'll notice the end platform has the beam on the left side and these platforms have the beam on the right side or I guess left side depending on how you look at it. But from this perspective you got it on the right side and the left side. So you can have sensors on either side of your creation to sort of pick up the placement of the box if you if you want to do it that way or you could just have like a hook that comes down and grabs it however you really want to do it it's up to you um, but you could use that as a reference point if you wanted to and the uh, the boxes will always be the same distance but there are other ways to do it um, and uh, you know that's it but anyway so we'll just line up here we'll line up our crane with the four key and, uh, and then we hit the five key and then four again you can see and then we can pick this one up and now we can just scoot it back and of course, this will all be automatic. And again, there is no time limit. So, uh, you know, design a better wheel system than what I did here. This is a terrible wheel system for running along a monorail. I could have, you know, even made this easier by having the, the guide pipes rotate. All right, and then we went way too far there. And uh, now we should be able to just put this down. And you can see there, I have no real good alignment tools. And pull that up and see even that so if we take a look this wouldn't even be the full five points because you can see there we're still exposing some of the white I'll try and judge it as best I can but uh, it has to be almost perfect and you should be able to make a mechanism to try and align it perfectly uh, or as close as you can and uh, like I said I'm not expecting people to get a perfect score I'm kind of doing that as a way to see how accurate people are and if two people have the same score I'll, I'll try and judge which one seemed to do it more reliably um, for these designs each design when I when I get the design and I download it I will give them all two attempts to complete the course uh, if they can complete it within two attempts then that's fine and that works and if they can't complete it within two attempts then the design will go into the did not complete pile and I know there are a bunch of people whose designs still work even though um, you know they went into the do not complete pile but uh, you know I have to I have to give myself some time it does take a long time to test all the creations you guys send in so this is basically what you want to do um, really simple again it's more of a target practice kind of thing but it is a, a delivery type system so don't necessarily have to build an AI that goes quickly but you want to build something that can lift up the boxes accurately, go through the sequence, and uh, and not get stuck the same way this one is. Hold on, let's see if we can put this down here. Come on. See, I don't have any sort of alignment. I'm just relying on, you know, a terrible hook to sort of put stuff down. So let's see if we can... No, see, almost. I need it to be straight. Come on, straight, straight. Straight. See, and that right there, that would be considered a perfect five points. So, you know, there's still a tiny, tiny sliver of white showing, but that's pretty much a, a dead centered box. So that would be a good five point box there. The spawn would be five point box. And so that's sort of the action required. Now, of course, I did that manually, so that's a lot easier to do. Uh, when you're doing this with an automatic vehicle, you do have this sensor hole here you can line up with. You can also have a piston that comes down and puts a peg into that hole if you really want to or however you want to do it. You could line up with the edge of this platform if you want um, and you could line up with the rail or you could line up with this beam. So I did try and give you guys as many different tools as you could use uh, to line up with the platform. But again, you have to build a robot that can complete the sequence so it can start move out, go along, hit that box, hit the other one, and come back. So I will upload this track to the workshop, uh, just like I did with the previous track, and I will upload it with the two boxes just, you know, mounted on, uh, we'll put them on little glass blocks here, and they'll be welded on there. So you can just delete the welds and, uh, and you know, use them and test them. But uh, it is exactly how it will be set up in the final testing course. So again, very simple. There's not a too lot much to it. Um, you know, you don't have to go up any hills. You don't have to go around any corners. But like I said, open-ended track. Got to make something that works pretty consistently. You get two tries to do it. No mods, no glitches, and uh, you should be able to make it all the way to the end and back. And there's no real size restriction. I mean, as long as it fits on this platform and, uh, you know, it can make it through the gates, you can make it as big as you want. And again, if you want to pick up both boxes at the same time, you are more than welcome to do that. So 
I encourage you guys to go check this out and uh, try it out. And again, go join the Discord server. Uh, the Discord is where you can submit your designs. You can also submit them by email if you want, but it's easier if you submit them in the Discord. There's a whole chat there. We talk about different ideas and different suggestions. And uh, I wanted to kind of do an AI challenge this time that doesn't just involve time and sort of involves a little bit different aspects of it. We will go back to some easier challenges if you guys find this one's too difficult. But uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think. And of course, join up the Discord and uh, hit up the conversation. So make sure you guys hit that like button down below and uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It does help out the channel very, very much. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.